Hello and welcome back to Calradia Expanded at War. And once again, we have the, uh, what is it, the Northern Empire? Yes, I think it's the Northern Empire. It's been a few days since uh, I had to uh, I had time to record, so obviously I'm going to be a little bit rusty here, but um, yeah, uh, <laughs> that might be a little bit problematic. But what is even more problematic is an Order of the Phoenix member actually uh, sticking around here, because it's seems like they're attempting to take Wallaham Castle, and I would very much like to try and prevent that. So we are going to move on and take him out. Hopefully we can. Yes, it seems like his troops are not particularly strong. Let's see what we can do with that. Okay, easy. Oh, yeah, that was much too easy, sir. All right, so um, a couple of people have actually been really, really helpful in the comments, and apparently... What I would really need to do is take a look at some of the rescue troops because sometimes the rescue troops have um, amazing, uh, uh, amazing units that you can potentially rescue and then they level up into some crazy combinations. And I've missed a couple of those, a handful, a smattering of really powerful units, unfortunately. But don't worry, I will be keeping an eye out for those guys in the future. But... Just to let you know, this is probably going to be the final episode of this particular series, mainly because we are pretty strong, right? We are pretty strong. There isn't really too many people that can fight us in a one-on-one -on -one situation. For example, let's do a little bit of a test here, shall we? Oh yeah, by the way, apart from the fact that this is going to be the final episode, we have increased the battle size. That is something that I haven't done in a very long time because the optimization of Bannerlord just wasn't good enough on my particular system to be able to run with anything higher than 400 or so battle size. I have now increased the battle size to 600. So that is obviously a pretty significant jump. We're going to have 200 extra units on the battlefield at any one time. That is also going to increase the difficulty. So we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, new series is going to be coming pretty soon. I have worked out a good theme for it and hopefully you're going to enjoy it as well. I'm also going to be uh, switching up how the episodes are produced and I'm going to see how that goes. Maybe it's going to be good. Maybe it's going to be not so good. But we're going to work through that together and we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I'm going to head in to help Wallaham Castle because he's actually, is he, is he actually trying to take this? He is, is he trying to take this? I actually have no idea. I don't think so. I mean, he is trying to take it, obviously, but I don't think he was inside the walls at the same time, but I suppose we'll see. Anyway, we have 253 against 347, and lo and behold, that is indeed 600, so that is pretty cool in my opinion. I like that. It is actually on very high. I had no idea that my previous battle size was medium. I actually thought at the time, because they didn't have these designations before, but I actually thought at the time that 400 was pretty good, you know, it was pretty high, because obviously I was used to warband standards at that point, and, well, I just wasn't, you know, very used to playing with such high battle sizes. I mean, yeah, technically that's not necessarily true, because warband is a very old engine, and generally I have played with 300 or so in that game, and while it did have problems, um, yeah, at least on my system at the time, producing um, battle sizes of higher than that, it was still possible sometimes if you were willing to compromise on the frame rate and things like that. But generally, I am going to hopefully be okay to deal with these guys. Get him. Get him. There we go. Take him down. There we are. All right. Hopefully my sharpshooters, hopefully my Vlandian sharpshooters are going to be doing a fantastic job as well because we know how fantastic they can be. They really are amazing. They are absolutely brutal from pretty much any range with the exception of close range, obviously, except if they still use their crossbows. Even uh, That's a funny thing. Even if the enemy gets into a close 
um, closing distance to to them. They can literally do so much damage, and they're not afraid. You know, these these sharpshooters, they are not afraid at all. They are willing to do whatever it takes to survive, and they'll they'll change weapon. They'll get in there. They'll get stuck in with their wonderful swords and shields and whatever other kind of weapons they get equipped with. But obviously, their main strength is just demolishing the opponent with huge amounts of bolts to the face, which is exactly what we want to see. Now let me see if I can actually do something about that. I'm actually going to tell my infantry to charge in as well. I think telling my infantry to charge in is going to be a, a great idea. And generally, we're hopefully going to be able to... Ah, there we go. Let's harass them. Ah, there we go. Harass them a little bit to make sure that they don't get too many shots off. This is actually something that I should do much more often, by the way, so... You know, new series and everything coming, I might try to do that there as well, but you got to bear in mind, maybe the theme prevents me from using a mount, or maybe it prevents me from, you know, various other things. I mean, <laughs> where else can I go, you know, because I've done so many different themes in all of my all of my series so far, you know, like Kuzate only and uh, ranged only, uh, I don't know, two handed, berserker. Uh, smithing focused, trading focused, you know, we've done so many different things. We even did Vlandian Knight, hilariously enough. I think we might be basically doing a, a kind of, um, I don't know, remastered version of the Vlandian Knight series in this particular one. Although in the Vlandian Knight series, I actually took over Vlandia itself. I didn't actually take over any of the thieves, um, but I basically uh, forced Durthart to, uh, well, I basically usurped the throne. That was pretty much what I did in that series. I thought that was actually really fun, but unfortunately I wasn't able to do it in this particular one, so that's kind of a shame. Really kind of did want to do that, but you know how it is. Sometimes you're just unable to get those additional votes that you need to be able to finish it up and everything, but Oh well, never mind, never mind. We, uh, we, we, I mean, I think we've got a really, really good foundation here, and generally, I, I don't think we can really be stopped at this point, and that's obviously the reason why the series should probably finish, because we just, well, we have no, uh, no additional, uh, no, no people, you know, no people to fight. I mean. Generally, we have people to fight, obviously, but no people that will give us a challenge, you know, a suitable challenge. You, I mean, you can see here, I mean, I've increased the battle size, as you can no doubt tell. And, I mean, we're still completely rampaging here. I mean, obviously we are, because we do have absolutely exceptional high-tier units that are capable of doing so much damage. They really are. And uh, I think once you get to this point, it's just... It, well, you know, it's just a formality, really, you know what I mean? So, we're probably going to be uh, making that new series, and um, I'll, I'll see how it is, see how it is. By the way, tell me how the audio is, because I did a little bit of a test before I started, and I wasn't entirely sure, I was a, a little bit on the fence. But um, at the moment, my uh, recording room has changed a little bit, so uh, do let me know what um, what you think about that because um, there isn't that much uh, well insulation shall we say for the sound so you might be you might be hearing some things but anyway point is I'm, I'm getting a, a little bit of lag right now for some reason why am I getting some lag that's kind of weird right okay I'm just gonna tell the uh, super fast mode to finish things up and there we have it I have no idea why we have 600 units maybe it's the um, the garrison probably the garrison coming and helping us a little bit yeah it is as you can see right there yeah that's that's pretty crazy and I actually managed to kill 39 enemies if you can believe it okay I'm actually gonna be once again letting every single person go and uh, oh Penton I might be able to persuade him actually I think Penton is someone that could potentially be persuaded as you can see we've now reduced his relation to negative one which is pretty good he might very well allow us to speak to him and give us a favorable uh, favorable result, potentially, but I'm not going to really hold my breath on that, to be honest. I mean, as I say, if this is the last episode, 
Does it matter? I don't know. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I mean, if it gives us a huge amount of territory, then yeah, maybe it does, maybe it does. Anyway, we have a couple of armies coming over here. Hopefully, Varmiros is going to attempt to take Thraktorai Castle back. I haven't really been needing to defend much at all, because a lot of our armies are being very active in that regard. They are actually going out and being, you know, real participants in these kinds of situations, which is absolutely fantastic. That's the kind of thing you want to see from your vassals, isn't it? You really don't want to see things like, oh, I don't know, uh, some massive army of, I, I don't know, a thousand units or something running away from the opponent and just continually running all the time. You know, that's definitely something you don't want. So it's really nice to actually see that. I'm gonna sell a bit more grain because I don't really need this much grain and I have so, so much food right now. It's kind of weird, right? Yeah, that is, that is a little bit strange. Okay, so we're going to do something like this, and then we're going to go here, sell a little bit of this. I mean, obviously, I don't need money because we're gaining so much from all of our properties and everything. Everything has a price, has definitely sorted us out for the remainder of the game. Even if I were to continue playing, uh, we would have no problems whatsoever with this. And generally, what I could, what I could technically do, which I actually thought about, is basically just let the game run for as long as I wanted, just basically let it run and run and run, and then uh, come back at some point in the future and see what happened, basically. See what happened, you know, maybe my faction is doing something cool, maybe it's, maybe it's been destroyed or something, you know, and I'm talking about letting it run as in, don't interfere in what is going on, because maybe, you know, maybe something fantastic is going to happen maybe we're going to be able to uh, earn so much money because i personally don't think are these guys any good by the way no these guys might be actually pretty good but yeah i personally don't think we would be losing any of our inner territory fiefs i think those those fiefs are untouchable by the opponent unless they are coming with i don't know 2000 combat strength or something like that i think they are way too difficult for the enemy to take and it's going to be way too much trouble for them to do so yeah these units are not any good so i will not be rescuing them i will be taking the prisoners will i i guess i will take the prisoners because we are quite close to a town so it kind of makes sense for me to go over there but what I would like to do is try and take Lagata, as I said at the very beginning. Oh, we actually made peace? Oh, oh yeah, we made peace because of the war exhaustion, didn't we? Yes, indeed, we made peace with that because they were about to get war exhausted and that is the main problem. Okay, well, that's not a big deal, not a big deal. All right. Ah, Epicrotia has been besieged. Well, that is obviously not a big deal either, because as you can see, Vilda's army is right there. Hopefully he's actually doing something and he'll be able to defend for us, which is going to be something nice. Okay, Vilda, I'm actually thinking of giving him this fief because he's doing an active job of defending and I very much appreciate that. So I'm very happy with his decision-making skills. And we are just going to continue going over here, selling these, recruiting some troops in the meantime. Oh, apparently I have... <laughs> apparently there aren't any recruitment targets for some reason. I don't know why that is, but okay. And let's take a look at... Oh, this is much better. Oh yes, give me that. Thank you very much. That is exactly what I want to see. Berahal Castle. Where is Berahal Castle, by the way? That is extremely far away. Yes, that is all the way over here. Yes, this is what I... Uh, this is what I took before, if you recall, in my attempt to, uh, shall we say, distract the uh, Azurai. Uh, but yeah, obviously we're going to have to recruit a couple of people before we head back into Azurai territory. And I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll try and speak to Adram real fast before the war exhaustion kicks in. They're probably going to be able to take Barahar Castle before the war exhaustion. And that is obviously what they are attempting to do. They really do want to do that pretty badly. And then once they've done that, they will have an extra territory and then we will have lost it and then we'll be at peace. That's the kind of strategy that I've used in the past to great effect. And unfortunately, they are now using it against me, which is obviously kind of frustrating. But, you know, you can't really do much about that sometimes. Anyway, I'm going to go and see if I can... Yes, there we go. Give me more of these. Give me more of these. Thank you. Yeah, now, what I really love, actually, about villages and things, having 
an excessive amount of relation with you is that when you go to them and you're using a mod like party screen enhancements or something like that, oh, you're in an army, you imbecile. Why are you in an army? Uh, okay, well, apparently he's in an army, so that's kind of unfortunate. But I will be able to speak to him after the fact. So maybe I'll be able to say, hey, uh, would you like to trade or something like that? Because I do have quite a lot of money. But yeah, anyway, as I was saying, once you have a lot of relation with a particular um, village or town and you're using the party screen enhancements mod to um, level up your troops and everything, obviously once you you know set up all of your predetermined routes for your upgrades so you can basically do things like this so you know recruits can level up into whatever you want them to level up into but the really cool thing about this is that if you have a village that it, that is at high relation you can basically just recruit specific things so for example you can recruit um, you can recruit crossbowmen you can recruit cavalry and then they only have one route you see they only have one route that they need to level up into so this automatic recruiting mod basically makes it super easy for you to be able to do that even if you don't set a path although obviously when you first start off playing you're definitely going to need some kind of upgrade because otherwise it's just going to remain with recruits and you're going to have to do it manually if you don't do that so that would be a bit of a pain wouldn't it but as it stands it seems like the Azurai is going to make peace with us in a second i'm actually wanting mm, no we can't force them unfortunately i thought we might be able to get some tribute but it doesn't appear as though that will be the case mm, do we have anyone else that we can declare war against i was actually hoping the vlandians might have uh, might have something for us in that regard but they don't obviously fantastic right okay so uh yeah this is this needs to be fixed, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, I'm playing on 1.6.4, which is game version quite, a, I think, quite a bit behind the actual version of the game. I think it's like, what, is it one or two versions behind? Maybe not quite a bit behind then. But generally, I think that war reparations, I think they need to be a bit more, don't you think? because literally we're, we're looking at five dinars right now. We're looking at five dinars. That is way too little, in my opinion, way too little for a, an entire faction to literally pay for peace. And they weren't able to take Berahar Castle, which is actually insane. I would have expected them to be able to take that in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an instant, basically. I'm kind of surprised about that. Okay, no idea why they weren't able to do that. Maybe there was some resistance from the garrison there. Um, surprisingly enough, I don't think I even put any people in the garrison there as far as I remember, but okay, apparently they were thwarted by a lone soldier named Jeff, and uh, apparently he has been uh, lifting for the past 2,000 years, and now he is very, very swole indeed, and uh, completely untouchable by any blade. <laughs> that is apparently what, uh, what, what defeated that... Uh, that attack, I guess. I have no idea, but oh well, never mind, never mind. Okay, so hello there, sir. I would like to murder you, and that is exactly what I will do. Thank you. Uh, yeah, obviously not true murder, but you know, he's um, he's perfectly fine to level up a couple more of our troops. Thank you very much. 95, 95 troops leveled up from that. That is crazy good. And now we can head into Kuyas as well. Actually, I seem to have maybe a perk. Yes, I oh, I have two perk points because our steward skill. Yes, I did put a focus point in steward and intelligence in the previous episode. And now this is really helping us out quite a bit. Although it's not really helping me in a, you know, in a, a super massive way. But it is increasing our party size. And it is giving me the opportunity to get a small amount of upgrades here and there. Cost of upgrading units decreased by 10%, reduce food consumption of parties during siege by 10%. We also have morale bonus from having diverse food is doubled. That is actually kind of nice, but we have 100 morale as it is, so it doesn't really make that much difference for me. Hmm. Reduce food consumption of garrisons during siege by 10%. That is a governor trait. Now, as far as I'm aware, and I've said this multiple times already, but I just want to clarify this as far as i'm aware you don't necessarily need to appoint a governor and as far as i'm aware if you are the owner of a town then you automatically become the governor as your own character because otherwise i personally feel like the these kinds of i mean i used to think that you'd need 
you know, a character to become the governor and so on. But as far as I'm aware, you are the governor. But if you if you found out that that is actually not the case, then by all means, let me know. Um, but generally, I think that the governor traits are working for the player character if you own it and there are no other characters that are the governor at least uh, that's what i think so i'm actually going to go for that because i think food consumption is pretty harsh when a garrison is being attacked so i'd like to try and reduce that a little bit and then the next one up is mercenary troops wages and upgrade costs reduced by 25 percent this is this is pretty terrible uh prisoners in your party provide carry capacity as if they are a normal troop and construction speed being increased by 10 percent. i'll definitely take that thank you very much that sounds much better all right so let's go into kuyas and see what we can do hopefully i'm going to be able to uh do some nice damage oh yes now bear in mind that we do have a couple of units that are still injured so hopefully by the time we have constructed our siege equipment they will be ready to fight all right so here we go it is time for us to try out our crossbow skills as i say i haven't played in a few days so uh, we are now having some issues hitting things yes let me try and see if i can take this guy down there we go yeah i thought that guy was a veteran the way he was moving you could tell he's seen battle he has definitely seen many many a battle and now he will never see one ever again how sad Yes, indeed. That is that is very sad. Okay, well, let's see what we can do here. I hit this guy in the head and he managed to survive. Can you believe it? Oh well, never mind. Alright, here we go. Wait a minute. Oh, that's another one. Yes, look at that guy. He he knows what's up. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. most of these guys are going to be Imperials, right? Yeah, most of these guys are going to be Imperials. So it is going to be a little bit difficult for us to deal with them. But thankfully the walls are definitely providing us with a lot of cover here as well. Unfortunately, there is a ballista up there, as you can see, and the ballista is doing some pretty... It's not really doing that much, to be honest. It's not really being that effective, so I don't think we need to worry too much. We might need to worry about some rocks coming down here. I have been killed by falling rocks before, so hopefully that will not happen this time. I'm going to try and sneak inside here if I can. Oh, it seems like I can't do that, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to... Uh, okay, maybe I... Oh, no, no. Maybe I'm going to die here. I've been cornered. Oh, it seems... What? What is going on here? Did you see that? There was some kind of graphics bug on the screen. That was weird. Okay, that was really, really strange. Did, did you see that, or was it just me? Maybe it was just me. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway. Oh, get him. There we go. Ah, phew. Okay, I'm very, very thankful I was able to block some of those. You know me. I'm pretty terrible at blocking in this game. Anyway, there we go. We can hopefully... Yes. Oh, that was a nice slash against the head right there. Maybe we can take out a couple of others. Oh, yeah. I should really use those thrust attacks, shouldn't I? There's not enough space. Let's use thrust. Eh. Yeah, it's not really working for me right now. I'll go for the overhead. Seems like we have enough space to be able to do that at least. And there we go. There's a nice horizontal as well. Nice. All right. I think I can probably speed things up right here. And that is all she wrote. Kuyaz is now ours once again. And uh, bear in mind that obviously now that the Azurai have made peace with us, we shouldn't have too many difficulties pushing the offensive and making sure that we achieve, uh, well, total domination over all of the Northern Empire fiefs as well. I should really try to speak to some of the Northern Empire guys because no doubt they have some things to tell us and maybe they want to switch sides, you know? You never know about that, so maybe it would be an idea for me to try that. Anyway, let's go and just send those guys in. There we go. And I'll take the prisoners because obviously... Oh, oh, they got some Vlandians. Some nice Vlandians too. Some Vlandian sharpshooters, no less. Very nice to see that. And I'm going to donate 24,000 experience to our people. I'm going to show mercy. I will indeed claim the fief myself because this is basically a foothold in this area and I'd like to be able to maintain it as fast as possible or as much as possible, shall we say. And hopefully by the time the Azerai declare war on us once again, they will, um, shall we say, hmm, we'll have a, a decent garrison here by that point, at least. That's what I hope. Okay. So, apart from Kuyaz being taken, I'm actually thinking about what we can do next. 
because as you can see, I think the Vlandians will probably declare war on us relatively soon. Mm, there's no support. There's no support for war anywhere else. That's kind of strange, right? I feel like that's kind of strange. But I have, I've chosen an, an offensive war strategy with the Northern Empire. I'm actually going to say defensive for the Kuzate. And we're going to attack the Northern Empire and we're going to defend against the Kuzate, hopefully. At least, yes, Epicurity has been taken, which is to be expected, of course. But I'm going to just take a quick look and see if we are friends with any of the Northern Empire. Mm, this guy is actually, oh wow, that's hilarious. He has taken Epicrotia. I'm gonna see if I can maybe persuade him to join us. I don't know whether he's the clan leader. He is the clan leader. That is absolutely perfect, actually. I was not expecting that. Okay, in Curion, I can't send a messenger to him, unfortunately. Uh, what about Oleg? He might be willing to join us. He is part of the Southern Empire. Not entirely sure if he will, but we'll try. And who else do we have here? Uh, Adram, obviously, but we... I mean, obviously, he is he is he at war anymore? I mean, he's not at war anymore, but is he in an army? That's the whole point. What about Aldrich? He's the owner of Kavlaniki. I might be able to get him to sell that to me for some amount of money because Kavlaniki is obviously right next to Kuyas, so it kind of makes sense for me to trade for that. Let's try those three guys, and we'll see whether anything happens from it. Ah, Aldrich apparently is the closest. Okay, hello there, sir. Uh, okay, yeah, well, yeah, you don't really want to leave your current faction. That is understandable. And let's see what I can do. Okay, yeah, that's... <laughs> that is stupid. I'm not going to trade that. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, almost, what, 2 point... Almost 2.8 million right there. Yeah, probably not going to do that. Thank you. Uh, but I will trade something else. What about trading some castles and things? Because... Oh, no, they're way too, mm, they're way too, uh, way too cheap, right? They're way too cheap. It feels way too cheap to trade those. What I could, what I could do is give him Kuyas. I could give him Kuyas and then I could literally just attack a Vlandian village or something like that, or, or just literally force through declaring war on them. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually going to do this. This is going to be hilarious. This is something that I really should have been doing much more often. Um... Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to give him any money. I'm literally just going to trade this castle right here. And I'll give him a small amount of cash. There we go. 37,000. Okay, this is looking really, really nice. Okay, there you go. Done. So now he owns Kuyas. But that's actually fine. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack this vassal over here. If I can actually catch up to them. Oh, that is a large army. That might be problematic. Yeah, that might be that, might, that actually might be pretty bad. Oh dear. Okay, well, let's let's just wait and see, okay? Let's just wait and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to Oh, 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 oh. He might be willing to join us. Critical success to start off the persuasion for Mr. Archon Porphalios. Bear in mind he is part of the Northern Empire, and the Northern Empire is currently at war against us. So if I am able to persuade him, then Epicrotia is ours. Oh, yes. Okay, let's see if he actually joins us right here. Okay, so he is actually joining us, amazingly enough. I'm thinking I might give him Omor. But he is devious, right? He's close-fisted and he's cautious. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that he's devious or, or you know, a backstabber or anything like that. But I'm kind of worried about giving him Omor because Omor is one of the, the better thieves that I own, I think. I could technically give him this castle, but that is not good, as you can see right there. He doesn't like just that. What about some money? He wants 500,000. I could give him 500,000. I'm actually pretty okay with that, to be honest. Let's do that. We've just gained Epicrotia, an entire vassal clan, for 500k, basically, because I don't really care about this particular castle down here. I mean, I can easily take that back if something happens with it. Um, actually, Wait a minute. Why? Why is it? Uh, why is it Vlandian? Did he not? Did he not join us? I thought. I thought he joined us right now. No, no, he did join us. Okay, so Berahar Castle was actually taken. Oh no, no, wait, no, wait. That wasn't the one I traded. Koilhal Castle was the one that I traded. Okay, my bad, my bad. I was. I was thinking that was a bit weird, right? Okay. Well, I I picked up on it relatively quickly. Yes, indeed, indeed. 
even though I did get a bit confused. Okay, let's have a look. Uh oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, this guy, this guy may want to join us. Oh, yes, I'm liking the sound of that. Oleg joining us as well. Please come along, good sir. I would very much like that. Okay, here we go. Okay, so he has a castle, which I really don't care about. Uh, I could give him something. Should I give him Kavloniki? <laughs> I mean, I, I could... Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna... Should I give him that? That is way too, way too much, right? Don't you think that's way too much? Maybe I could, I could give him Wallerum Castle. I could give him Wallerum Castle, actually. I mean, I don't really want to do that. What about Deneen Castle? I'm going to give him Deneen Castle, I think. I think that sounds like a, a better idea. I mean, do I have any castles from the Sturgeon territory? Because I think this guy's originally a Sturgeon. Yeah, you know what? Let's just do that because he's going to join like so. There we go. All right, because we are obviously at war. Oh, we're not at war against the Southern Empire. Why not? Huh. Oh, well, never mind. We gained a clan, and that's all I really cared about. So anyway, let's see if I can maybe do some damage against this vassal. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me just declare war straight away. Although these guys are traveling to Kuyaz right now. And as you can see, there's a very small garrison in there. I would assume the army is wanting to place more units in the garrison. And they didn't. There's only 121 in there. That's really nothing. Okay, so once Leet Gardis is a little bit further away, I'm thinking we might decide to declare war and then just go straight on in and see what we can do. All right, let's do this. Uh, Vlandia, declare war. There we go. Let's do this. Here we go. Okay. Uh, this might be a little bit touch and go. I'm. I'm gonna. Uh, this is. This is a bit. This is a bit close. This is a bit close for my liking. I do not want to get into a field battle here. Oh. Oh. Request. Okay. This is fantastic. This is actually fantastic. Um. We can pay you to end the siege. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really care about that. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna say you will stop starving when this settlement falls or when you fall. Okay. Um, yeah, twelve thousand is not really my deal. Ah, don't go in. Ah, you. Oh, she grinds my gears right now. She really grinds my gears. I personally think that we are going to have no problems defeating them, but it is just one of those things that is a bit of a pain. You know, it's a bit of a pain to do. Although. Here's the thing, I might be speaking a bit too confidently, you know what I mean? I might be speaking with a bit too much confidence, and as a result, that will be my downfall. You know how that is? Oh yes, you know, you know how I am. Sometimes, I mean, that's a, a, a sort of a lifelong thing in, in Fountain Blade for me. Whenever I get overconfident, that is when the worst things happen. And it could very well be the case this time as well. So let's hope that that will not be the case, and that I will actually be able to maintain a decent kill death for my forces, and I won't actually uh, succumb to the enemy's advances here. Ooh, we took out the enemy army commander. That is exactly what I want to see. Thank you very much. Okay, so now what I'm actually going to try to do is, as I mentioned in a previous, uh, previous battle in this episode, we're going to try and eliminate a couple of the enemy's archers, but I don't seem to... Ah, there we go. There's, there's a couple of them. They seem to be separating a little bit from the main line right here, and they have some Batanian Fians, which is very scary. If they had more of those, or if they had some champion level Fians, then obviously that's going to be a bit of a problem. And, uh, ah, yeah, it's, I seem to be getting some uh, some graphical issues right there. That, that is kind of strange. Did you see that? Ah, oh, I hope you didn't. I really hope you didn't. I hope that's just on my end. But, uh, yeah, that was a bit of a weird, weird graphics, uh, weird graphics error there. But, oh well, never mind, never mind. Okay, let me see if I can do something about this. Yeah, take him down, thank you. Can we... Is, is, is that a victory already? Surely not. That's not a victory already. I don't think so, somehow, personally. I'm gonna tell my cavalry to charge in. We have a, we have 55 of those guys. I mean, really, how can we not tell them to charge in? We might as well take good advantage of them. Thank you. 
Oh, we hit that guy off his mount with that crossbow shot. That is exactly what I want to see. That's the kind of thing I really love, by the way. I mean, obviously, I've mentioned this before, but generally, anything that kind of affects the opponent in some additional way apart from damage, I think that's super nice. I love those kinds of effects because you can really see the impact of it. And it's kind of realistic in that fashion as well because, let's face it, if you get hit by something like a projectile or whatever and you're not expecting it or something, it's a complete surprise, you might very well get knocked off your horse. You know, it's one of those things. And uh, definitely something that I very much appreciate them adding. You know what I would actually really like? I'd like the ability... I mean, I know I think this is actually available in a mod... Uh, already um, and I was actually thinking of installing that for a previous series but um, I think it's a mod that allows you to bandage yourself and gain back a little bit of HP and now that's the point I'm not sure if that really I mean obviously in a game sense that's that's kind of cool right I mean I, I actually really like the ability to be able to heal yourself but in a realistic sense, is it actually going to give you HP back? Well, maybe, because it might stop some bleeding, right? It might stop bleeding, so it might very well extend your lifespan in that particular scenario. I mean, obviously, this is very much from a game sense and not from a realism sense, but I think that's actually kind of a cool... Uh, it's a cool feature, no? I, at least I think it's a cool feature. But maybe it's something I'll use in a future series. Not in the next one, because I don't think it fits the theme, so to speak. But, yeah, definitely something to think about uh, for something else. Anyway, I believe that is indeed a victory for us. And you can see here, literally, we lost that few units. And that is all thanks to the fact that we have so many high-tier units. As I've said before, it's all to do with high-tier units, and that is it. You know, there is... Nothing else to it, pretty much. Nothing else to it. Ah, Calatil's fighting us. Oh, how dare you. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm going to let all of them go, because no doubt we have some pretty decent relation with some of them, and we might still be able to persuade them. Bear in mind, however, that as this is the final episode, well, you won't be seeing any of that, but I might I might do a little bit of uh, a little bit of extra progression in this uh, game save, just to see what happens along the way because I'm kind of intrigued about that because I've never had a character that is good at trading and fighting at the same time you know I mean I think the berserker was pretty good at that right the berserker had some pretty good trade skill but uh, I, I'm not sure whether he was capable of charming anyone I think his charm skill was kind of low maybe I'm actually not sure about that either anyway their chance of surrender is high I'm actually wondering oh here we go done yeah, uh, that's also something that someone confirmed for me in the comments uh, that the whole starvation mechanic thing, that is actually a real thing. The, the uh, exploit or advantage that you can gain from basically buying all the food from a particular town and then besieging a place. Yeah, that actually does work apparently, according to one of you in the comments. So... Yeah, I appreciate you letting me know about that because that really makes a huge difference. And as you can see, we now have Kuyas back once again. And now if I wanted to, I could basically trade this off again. And then, you know what I could do? Yeah, I could then siege it again. And then I could do the same thing again and again and again. But bear in mind, doing that is a little bit problematic because you can only barter with people that are not your enemy you see. And that is the main thing. That's probably the reason why the developers instituted that particular restriction where you can't enter trade talks with your opponent. Because if you could, then it would be in it would be one of those situations where you, you know, trade something away, you declare war, and then you take whatever that is, you know, whatever that thing is back again from that particular faction. And then if you were to trade again with someone from that faction for one of their towns and then take the same thing back again. So, for example, if I were to do a repeat of the process with Kuyas and some other vassal, then I would be able to gain additional territory over and over and over again with very minimal effort, very minimal cost to me. And that's the reason why you can't trade with enemies. However, if I wanted to do it more significantly, then I could probably speak to someone from Batania, for example. So let's have a look who owns Lagata. 
Melodia owns Lagata. Okay, he has a negative seven relation with us, so he may very well not be too pleased to hear from us, but we'll try nevertheless. Hello there, sir. Okay, I have a proposal. I'd like you to give me a Lagata for Kuyas. He's, he's happy to do that. Look at that. He is actually happy to do that. I'm going to take all his money as well. There we go. Okay, so he's happy to do that. And now he has lost everything, basically, because he has no fiefs here. Uh, well, should we say <laughs> no fiefs? I mean, he's going to have no fiefs, but generally, you, you, you just wait and see what happens. This is just a demonstration of the advantage that you can gain from doing this. Now, I'm just going to... Oh, I can't declare war because we have a non-aggression treaty. Uh, how, 37 days? Ah, oh, that's kind of sad. Oh, well, never mind. Oh, well. The point is, if I didn't have this non-aggression pact right now, I'd be able to declare war on them straight away. I mean, technically, I could attack. Hmm. Can I attack one of their villages and actually cause this to be... Um, cause this to be war? I'm not entirely sure whether the non-aggression treaty prevents me from attacking their villages. But I'm kind of intrigued to see what happens. Okay, I'm going to attack one of their caravans and we'll see. I want everything you've got. Okay. Fighting them will cause a war. Okay, there we go. Okay, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that actually does work. Okay, so you can just completely ignore the, the, formal, um, the formal declaration of war in that case. And you can literally just declare war on them any or how by attacking some villagers or whatever. I thought that they, they might prevent that but look at look at what's happening there you go instant we just took kuyas back <laughs> that's that's pretty crazy and i'm going to claim the fief once again and then again so on and so on and i basically just gained lagata for free because i did nothing i did nothing at all and bear in mind that obviously the batanians you know, hilariously enough, are um, basically useless. They, 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 they are very non-threatening at the moment. They can't really do much. So their whole, you know, their whole faction is basically done because you can see here that they don't own anything. They don't own anything at all. And I took their last town without any, any blood loss, actually, with the exception of the caravan that I just attacked. But um, we, we, we won't mention that. <laughs> we won't mention that in our biography. Oh yes, the biography of old man Byron. I'm sure that's going to be a bestseller to no one. All right, anyway, that's going to be it for this episode and for this series. And uh, hopefully you'll stay tuned for the next one. It's going to be, I think, pretty interesting and quite a lot of fun. But I'll let you be the judge of that. And uh, hopefully I'll see you there. I thank you very much for watching and for staying with me along this journey, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>